Hey guys, what's up? It's your man Pete. I just thought I would do this video talking about some of the rumblings that I'm hearing coming out of Asia that might actually have an impact on some pre-construction condos here in Toronto. Because as we all know, equity markets, financial markets, and money is, is all tied together globally now, right? And we saw that happen in the 2008 financial collapse. That was a little bit before I came into real estate. But essentially what happened was the market in the US was overextending itself. You know, they were lending and giving mortgages to people that just didn't qualify for mortgages. And so that whole great recession actually took down some of the greatest and most legendary financial firms on Wall Street, including Lehman Brothers, Bear Stearns, and of course, AIG. And you guys know the story. Then the government had to come in and bail out all these companies. And it took them some years to actually recover from the financial real estate collapse in the US. Some of you may have followed the story, but last year there was a Chinese developer, one of the biggest in all of China, called Evergrande, was having trouble paying their debts. Because as you may not know, these really large development firms, they, they tend to depend on leverage and borrowed funds. They sometimes don't have the liquidity and the cash to be able to pay their bills. Just just like everybody else and you know I was tempted to do a video about it last year but you know I, I'm not too familiar I don't really understand what's going on in China they're very opaque with their numbers we don't really know what's actually happening but what we do know is that that very large developer in China was having trouble paying their bills essentially like they didn't have liquidity and cash to be able to meet their obligation and, and with this type of situation it usually takes a long time for things to unfold and to develop and for us to uncover what's really going on and the thing is it's finally hit our beloved GTA here as well. It's very quiet. It's still sort of in the early stages. We don't know exactly what's going on. What we're hearing is that one of the developers here is having trouble and they might actually default on their loans and default on their bills as well, which again puts some investors who bought pre-construction years ago at risk. And unlike the government in the US in 2008 who was willing to bail out these companies, right now China is going through a restructuring of their own where the powers that be are not so inclined to want to help these companies because technically they're supposed to be a socialist state, a communist state. In a way they're trying to punish or rein in the power and the greed that's been developed through their quote unquote capitalist system. It's essentially the government saying, you know who your daddy really is, right guys? So flashback about six years ago when this developer that's actually based in South China and Hong Kong called Ao Yuan purchased this plot of land in North York, you know, pretty much the edge of Toronto. They started selling pre-construction condos. You know, it was a very large site. It was a multi-phase, multi-tower project and it's currently under construction and has been under construction for some time now. They are literally out of the ground. And at the time they were selling for about thousand to eleven hundred dollars per square foot for the pre-construction condo units which at that time sounded pretty expensive and pretty ridiculous for the uppermost northern tip of Toronto but if you were to offer those prices right now I would be like give me ten so for now based on what we're hearing online is that yes there's trouble overseas you know we don't have any firm details about what's happening here in Toronto yet I think they're just delaying as long as possible to try to figure out what the next steps are now again this isn't the first time this has happened in Toronto this also happened at one bloor which at the time was in the middle and in the thick of the financial crisis and what happened was that developer I think they defaulted and they couldn't continue the project because of liquidity issues again but it really sounds like this project here is going to be going through some trouble but definitely some major very big question marks heading into the next couple of years because if they've got trouble brewing at home and they can't take care of the finances back home and nobody's bailing them out you know typically the overseas projects are the first ones that they have to give up and so normally what happens here in Toronto when we see situations like that is another developer if they've got the capacity if they've got the liquidity they can take over the project hopefully buy it at a discount because to be honest all the heavy lifting all the hard work is already done so going through the approval process with the cities building the foundations for these condos those are typically the hardest parts of any project once it gets out of the ground you can basically build a floor a week but yeah for this developer Ao Yuan, it was basically their very first foray in the greater Toronto area but this is really their sort of main signature project that they were going to build in the Toronto and GTA area and it really seems like things are going to be up in the air for now. So best case scenario for early investors and pre-construction buyers is that this thing is going to get delayed probably another two or three years, maybe more. Worst case scenario potentially is that your deposits, you know, I don't know what's going to happen with your deposit, which is why it's so important for another developer to come in, take over the project and make sure that it gets completed so that 
everybody gets paid. So thank God, that's why we have such a hot market here. That's why we have so many people that are willing to throw their money into real estate. And I'm pretty sure we're gonna be able to find another developer who's gonna be able to take it over, finish it off, and then let the investors and homeowners occupy or sell their units. But again, it just sort of shows the risk levels in terms of pre-construction and buying projects off floor plan, you know, which years ago I thought was a pretty good strategy. And I've been implementing that strategy for many years, even before I became a real estate agent. Again, you know, back in those days, paying pre-construction prices were cheaper than resale values. And so, you know, you had to accept a certain level of risk. And to mitigate that risk factor, you had to pay less than market price, less than market value. But these days when you're paying a premium for newer stuff, and there's the potential for risks of projects not being completed or even developer fraud, I'm not entirely sure if it's worth the risk anymore. Some would argue differently because it is speculating and there is the possibility that prices could go up. And in this case here, prices probably have gone up for these units in North York, but again, risk factors. Because you're not really buying a legally registered property, you're just buying a contract, a piece of paper for the right to close on that property. I'm not saying you should avoid pre-construction altogether because that's definitely not the case. But in rare circumstances, things like this do happen and the city has seen it happen through a few different cycles. This happened at one Bloor, which ended up getting a new developer coming over and taking over. They had to sort of restructure everything. I think they had to redesign the whole building and redesign the floor plans and sizes. And there was another case of this happening in North York where I think it was just a straight up fraud where the lawyer colluded with the developer and then they ran off with the money. Which is why at our brokerage and with our agents, I'm really promoting the fact that people should be focusing on resale or maybe even assignments right now where the project is more complete. It's almost there. You can see, you can touch, you can feel the actual property. And even with pre-construction at these prices, it's not easy to even get a unit anymore. Personally, I think your chances are better just going into the resale market or the assignment market. So if you guys need some help, you definitely want to give us a shout here at Selling Toronto. We'd be happy to help you with that. I'm a big fan of risk mitigation for my clients, especially when prices get to these frothier levels. I'm a big fan of protecting my clients, making sure their capital is well taken care of. It's a responsibility I don't take lightly and I always do great for my clients. So just thought you guys should know about this news. I mean, it's still just rumblings right now and it's not definite what's going to happen with this project or this piece of of land. So if you're in the thick of it and you own some units in this project, then maybe you would have a better sense of what's going on, or maybe you don't. But if you are looking to buy or sell property, a condo, a house, townhouse, anything this year, then you should definitely give us a call here at Selling Toronto. We would be happy to assist to help you make the right strategic moves so that you can build wealth and frankly have a very comfortable and nice lifestyle. That's what we specialize in. So if you haven't yet, please make sure you hit the subscribe button, give us a like, throw us up a comment. But as always, if you need some personal direct service advice you should definitely give us a call or send us an email contact is in the description below or also at the end of the video or you can also head over to our website and you can find the information there so thank you all for watching we just crossed 4,000 subscribers and I'm super super happy we are off to a phenomenal start here in 2022 here at Selling Toronto we hope that we can have the opportunity to work with many more of you and help you secure property or to help you sell or trade up and so now we're on to our next milestone which is 5,000 subscribers. So thank you all from the bottom of my heart. I really appreciate those of you who are contacting us through the channel and we'll see you guys soon in the next one. Bye for now.